think we've we've done a lot of changes in our lineups. We've we've done a lot of work on our consistency, and it's been up and down. Um, home races are good, but we need to work a little bit on our game day prep and game day face being at home that you kind of have control over on the road with hotel yep. and, and time to get out. Um, then when we kind of went on the road, we kind of got a really good primer on long travel and then being able to compete after that. Uh, again, mixed results. Uh, some boats handled it very well. Some boats struggled a little bit. So hopefully this being a little bit of a shorter trip, um, getting a more solid week of training in, uh, you know, the time between Duquesne and Boston, we only had three rate or three practice days. Yep. So, uh, this week we're, we've gotten five. It just, we're, we're able to roll a little bit more this week and hopefully it's going to show up with a little more consistency this weekend. So like a boat, like your, your two V mm -hmm. against Michigan state, they lose by tenths of seconds. Yep. Then they were able to win at Duquesne, but then they go to Boston and finish third. Is that the kind of consistency you're looking for? Uh, well, yes, like they had a spectacular race against Michigan state and really put everything on the line. Then kind of the next day, Duquesne isn't, is not at the same level as Michigan state. So they didn't, they did enough to win, but really didn't have the same performances the day before. And then going to Boston, they let a lot of those intangibles, the travel, et cetera, uh, get, get to them and didn't didn't start the race well. And then because of that, it was kind of out of reach before they really got into a place where they were moving. And that's, that's the consistency. Like right away at Michigan state, they knew they had to race, you know, or with Michigan state line to line. And so I think they, they were a little bit not prepared for that. Uh, when we went to Boston. So meanwhile, your one V seemed to pick it up as well. I mean, you look at the times they put up the first the two weekends when you were home and then last week able to beat Boston College. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, they've been getting a little bit sharper. Like they raced pretty poorly against Michigan State uh, and then raced much better against State, Duquesne. Uh, raced a little bit better against BU and Boston College. I think we could have, we were a little bit slow off the start, um, which is one of our big focuses tomorrow during practice is working on our quickness on our start and kind of everything we get that Boston gained was in the first 500 or first quarter of the race. So if we can, if we can dial that in a little bit tighter, I think we're probably eight or 10 seconds faster than where we were last week. We talked so much about the eights the, all in these, but how have you seen the progression in your fours? Uh, the fours are very young. Um, I think right now our top four has a junior who it's really her second year because of COVID and then three freshmen. So four is very young. Um, and we had a novice four that raced really well against, uh, Duquesne and a couple of those, uh, girls are in the, the varsity four this weekend. Um, so some people moving up who have been stepping up to our seat racing and erging. And so we're going to see if they have the ability to rise to the occasion with Bucknell and Villanova. Yeah, turning your attention this week, I mean, it'll be a chance for you to, to head to the Susquehanna River opportunity, but it's a tough position just because we've talked about offline just the way the race is going to be set up with some conditions that aren't what you nor normally see. Yeah, the the race is, um, the Susquehanna is in a little bit of flood stage. I mean, every, it's been raining everywhere in the last couple of weeks, so... Typically, we'd have a buoy course coming down the river with the current stake boats. Um, because of the, the high flow rate, we're going to race against the current on an impeller-designated course um, for a 2K. Uh, so it's going to have to, we just have to kind of change. The time will be about right, but we're going to have to change kind of our race plan on when we're going for things. These are, are, are similar conditions to what you might see in a, a CAA race at some point, right? Uh, they're kind of, um, the times will be about the same, the, the, but because of how they're going to set this up, the times will be the same, but typically the CAAs, we race with a little bit of a tail current. Um, Camden has a little bit of a push for you. Uh, so they'll, the, time, the race time will be about right, 
the how we're going to have to approach it's going to be a little different just because of the loading factor and some of our rig. What what do you see out of the competition? You get Bucknell, you get Villanova, you get Connecticut. I mean, Villanova, Connecticut are names that people jump off and are familiar with, but Bucknell's still also a really talented squad. Yeah, uh, because of like the setup of how it's going to happen, like we'll race Bucknell in the morning and then we'll race Villanova in the afternoon. And I think our 3V is the only both that'll race UConn. Um, so we'll like... Bucknell is right now the fastest of the competitors um, based on race times. Uh, so for us, we really want to get out in the 1V and put up a good time against them. Um, you know, with the intention of beating them, it's going to be a tough, tough yeah. race. Uh, and then going in the 2V, the, our, our 2V looks pretty competitive with theirs, particularly if they race like they race against Michigan State. Um, as well as the four, like, I think this race is going to be a little more even to start and cause we've had a couple good things happen. People come back from injuries. So I think we're going to find a pretty good spot to be in going into this race. And then can we use that opportunity to go and win from there? It seems like an eternity ago, but last year you were supposed to be in the same event. It was canceled in 19. Your 1V and your Novice 8 both knock off Bucknell in competition. What what does that hopefully transpire? Uh, I mean, three years is a long time. Um, you know, it's we knocked off Bucknell by like a couple tenths of a second. Mm -hmm. It was tight. So, you know, that means that we're basically roughly given each day the same. So hopefully we are able to go um, to their house and race our best race and end up a little bit faster than they are mentally and preparation wise you've been dealing with the wind you've been dealing with lightning how do those things affect your preparation i it's it just cuts our water time down um we haven't had a full water time practice week since spring break which was at the beginning of march uh you know, I we can complain about it, but really it's whether we're able to take the time we're, we're given or time we can have and be s consistent and successful and like get good practices in. I mean, we had a great day. We broke the 1V and 2V into fours uh, yesterday and had just a really well executed piecework day that we got some good speed, got some good racing in. Um, the... The four and the three V did the same thing on Tuesday. So if we can take and make sure we have those days, take full advantage of them, those are gonna be huge. Cause we had today, there's a 25 mile an hour wind blowing right down, right at our docks. We can't safely go out. So how do we, you know, we did things like wash boats and uh, cleaned up the boathouse, which badly needed it. And um, body circuits and urge yesterday we ended up erging uh, for our afternoon session so can we use those times to get faster even though we don't have the water time or are we using are we kind of moping because we aren't able to get that water time and not getting the best out of ourselves it's also been a good week because you get some team bonding opportunities this week you had the ipsies on monday they get to be together as a group and then you fast forward to the weekend. It's a holiday weekend. So that also means a time for them to be together. Yeah. So um, we actually had a, a little bit of a event yesterday. We did a uh, erg where you had X amount of time to complete the erg. If you completed under that time, the time left over, we hit our uh, Easter eggs in the erg room. Did an Easter egg hunt, a little team building. That's going to sound good. Uh so we, we did a, we had a nice, you know, some fun there. Um, hopefully our athletes are able to, you know, this Bucknell is close enough. We should get home early enough that every, you know, some people are able to go home, spend some time with family for Easter, but also those who can't spend some time with each other and getting ready for our last week of class and, you know, start of really the last normal week of practice before we start our carryover and exam week. Does it also mean the, the return of trailer talk? Uh, yes. Um, I mean, we, we did trailer talk for Alabama. Um, trailer talk last week probably would have been bad. We had a little <laughs> bit of a tough ride home. Um, we, we lost a couple tires. Uh, so we decided uh, 
to not do trailer talk because it probably would not have been uh, publishable. It probably would have been Angry Kemp. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, maybe even worse of Defeated Kemp. Just, just today's not our day. Uh, so hopefully on the way home, uh, we'll do trailer talk, but also I think, you know, we're, we're letting my staff, uh, drive the trailer home without me for the first time in a while. So it might just be our, our assistant coach trailer talk. Is it weird to relinquish control like that? I know you love to drive that. It is. Um, but also it's, you know, part of our whole idea is developing our athletes and staff to be the best coaches because you never know you know if the last two years have taught us anything at any point like someone cannot be able to go um or travel or whatever so having a staff that i trust to take the equipment and run a a weekend is so important and the only way for them to really get the full experience is to not have me holding that part of the the trip and then having stepping up and you know Delaney has driven trailers a lot with me so she's fully you know ready to go and take over the lead of thinking about the small things like how do you get a trailer out of a gas station um so I think it's really part of you know their progression and their being the coaches they can be because you know as much as I'd like them to be my staff forever my goal is for them to move on and like get their own head coaching jobs. So. How, how have you seen them grow over the course of this year? I mean, you've got three assistants and all of them do uniquely different jobs. Yes. Um, I think growth is, I, I, I guess I'll start with Annie and that she's, this is her first collegiate coaching job and just seeing her like learn each step along the way of like how we do little things like, you know, credit card reports, like mm -hmm. little things and, and learning and like getting the point where she's asking for more and taking more on because she's ready for it and wants to be a bigger part of the process as well as, you know, seeing her go through recruiting. Like that's a new thing that, you know, you were recruited five, nope. six years ago. Now you're the one doing that phone call, which is a very different um, side of that. Um, for Nicole, like Nicole, you know, taking over the lead on the novice program um, and being kind of the boss of that, as well as she's now the head coach of the fours, um, making that progress of kind of stepping into rather than having give, being given a plan, starting mm -hmm. to develop her own on how she wants to run that part of her experience. Um, Delaney, like I'd love to say that I've gotten Delaney to grow a bunch, but Delaney is a spectacular coach, knows her business, knows herself, and has done a lot to like connect with athletes. Yes, yeah, she was here yep. two years ago, but coming back, um, connecting to the people she didn't know, uh, and just being kind of a really good push in our 2V, which, you know, in order to win a conference championship, we need the 1V, the 2V, and the 4. And yep. we've had year to year a good 1v maybe a good 2v but we haven't had the full package yet and i think delaney has really added to that like the attention the experience in the four so uh as well as her taking over the recruiting coordinator um and really pushing our recruiting we're doing more international we're doing more you know doing a better job locally we're just reorganizing our entire program to move with the times we're in.